Okay, team, let's rewind. Here's what's been happening on Ghost Rider. The facts. First, Ghost Rider's been traveling back in time to the year 1928. It's made him very weak. He's trying to help Frank and Catherine, who lived in Jamal's house 65 years ago. Frank's been accused of stealing a silver tea set from his foster family, the Canellans. Dr. Canellan says he's going to send Frank to the home for wayward boys. And... Ghost Rider says it's very important to prove that Frank is innocent. It will save the team. So the team teaches Frank and Catherine how to make a case book. Frank and Catherine have three suspects. Millard Fillmore Smith, the Ritter brush man who visited the house. Mrs. O'Boyle, the housekeeper who doesn't like Frank. And Lucy, Catherine's sister, who's been snooping around and reading his hidden family letters. Frank is afraid he'll never become a doctor. And Ghost Rider sends the team an important message. Must help Frank become a doctor. Then, since Ghost Rider's friends live in the future, they can look back on newspapers from 1928 to see if this case was ever solved and who did it. By reading old newspapers from 1928, the team finds out that Millard Fillmore Smith only pretended to be a Ritter brush man. His real name was Raynard Wilcox, and he was the one who stole the tea set. So Raynard Wilcox is the imposter's real name. Then... Something strange is happening. The article starts to disappear from the newspaper. History could change if the team doesn't get this information to Frank and Catherine in time. But Ghost Rider has a really hard time bringing the message to Frank and Catherine. Meanwhile, Jamal is worried about his dad. He's very sick in the hospital. Can Ghost Rider carry the message to Frank and Catherine in time? Get a pencil in your casebook out and start piecing the puzzle, because the Ghost Rider team is on the case. Frank. All of his things are gone. I think he ran away. Frank? Frank, come back! Well, I got information that'll prove you're innocent. Frank, we can solve the case now. Frank! You better stop yelling before Father and Mrs. O'Boyle hear you. But I gotta find Frank. I got information that'll prove that he's innocent. It's too late now. He's gone for good. What are you doing? Closing up Frank's secret hiding place. What? Secret hiding place. I didn't know about this. I knew. He kept his diary and all his mother's letters in there. I read them when he wasn't around. Those things were private. How could you do something so rotten? Well, you two are always whispering and keeping secrets from me. That's pretty rotten, too. Lucy, that's no excuse. You're just mad because I found out things about Frank that you don't even know. What kind of things? I can't tell you. They're private. Look, Lucy, let's not fight right now. Maybe something that you read could help me find Frank. Maybe. Look, Lucy, you've got to help. I can prove Frank's innocent so he won't have to go to the home for wayward boys. I want him to go. Why? Because you like him better than you like me, and you never play with me anymore. Sorry, Lucy. I didn't mean to leave you out, but I promise if you help me find Frank, I'll play with you and I'll never keep secrets from you ever again. You mean it? Cross my heart and hope to die. Then tell me who Ghost Rider is. All right. I'll tell you as much as I can, but you got to promise you won't tell anybody. I promise. Is he a good ghost or a bad ghost? Good ghost. And he and his friends were trying to help us prove Frank's innocence. A ghost with friends? Yes, his friends live in the future, 1993. You're making all this up so I'll help you. No, I'm not. It's true. He sends his messages from the future, and the only way to communicate with him is through writing. Then let me write to him. You can't see him, Lucy. He's invisible to everybody but me and Frank. Then let me write and see. You can't see him. I wouldn't lie to you.
Well, where is he? I told you. You're a big phony. Lucy! Lucy! Lucy, please, I'm begging you! Lucy, please help. He is real! Now will you help me? I'll do anything you want. That's the only letter I have. I dropped it when I was putting them back in the secret hiding place this morning. I don't think it's going to help. Read the letter to me out loud. There must be some clue in there that'll help us find Frank. Dear Elizabeth, I hope you and Frank are well. It's been such a long time since I laid eyes on you. I try to have a new letter ready to mail you every time we pull into a station. The conductor says there's lots of work for fellows like me in California. As soon as I arrive, I'm going to find a job and save every penny. Then I'll come back for you and Frank, and we'll enjoy the 20th century together. Love, Sean Flynn. So Frank's father was on his way to California to try and find work. And he was on a train, because he was mailing the letters from a station, and he mentioned a conductor. Good. And he was going to save all his money so he could come back for them and they can enjoy the rest of their lives together. It doesn't say the rest of their lives together. It says enjoy the 20th century together. Well, we're living in the 20th century, so he mainly wants the family to enjoy the rest of their lives together. But look at the way he wrote it. The words 20th century are capitalized, see? Well, maybe he made a mistake. Or it could have been the name of a train. Like the one on the poster by Frank's bed. Lucy, you're right. That must be the name of the train he was on. And Frank could be going to California to try to find his father. On a train called the 20th Century. The railroad station's only a few blocks from here. All right, if we hurry, we might be able to catch him. Frank? Right. Uh-oh. If father finds out Frank run away, he won't let us go after him. I have a plan. You keep father upstairs and I'll find Frank. Lucy! Frank? Uh, what are you doing down here? I, I, uh, I, um, I came to talk to Frank. Well, you better let him sleep. We can come back later. All right. Uh, I have something very important to tell you, Father. Dad looked really sick, Grandma. I know. But there's nothing we can do about it tonight. In the morning, they'll take more tests, x-rays. I'm sure they won't find anything serious. But what if they do? Well, the doctors will get him well. He's at a good hospital. And you know with your mother working there, he's going to get the best care there is. Grandma. I want you to promise me to tell me the truth about everything, no matter how bad it may be. I'm old enough. I can take it. I promise. And you know, Jamal, I'm proud of the way you've handled things. I'm going to have to start treating you like the mature young man you are. Thanks, Grandma. And Raynard Wilcox pretended to be a Ritter brush man? Yes, and that's how he got into other people's houses. And when they left the room, he would steal any valuable silver that they had on no, hand. This is a pretty far-fetched tale, Catherine. Father, you got to believe me, and you must call the police. And where did you get all this information? I was reading about neighborhood robberies in the police gazette, and What, then... the police gazette? You read that? Well, I was in the library, but... You know the police gazette Lucy found in the basement? That was mine, not Frank's. What? I've been reading them since long before he came to live with us. Oh, Catherine. Look, I'm sorry, Father, but I'm crazy about crime stories and mysteries. 
We can't talk about this right now. Come on, you've got to call the police. Oh, I don't know, Catherine. This all please. seems to be... No, no, no. Please, Father. Please. 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 All right. All right. <sighs> Thank you. Go and get Frank. What? Let's go and wake him up. He should be here when the police arrive. Frank? Frank? Don't shout, for goodness sake. Go and get him. Frank? Put your belly ache in. I'm here. Frank, you're back! Children, please. Lucy got me at the railroad station. She had one of your father's letters that we used to figure out where you might be. I thought she was up to one of her dirty tricks again until she showed me the casebook and told me that ghostwriter wanted her to help us. <laughs> I'm so glad you're back. Oh, and ghostwriter and his friends, they sent us back the information that we needed. And father's on the phone telling the police right now. I hope they'll help us. If they don't, I'm really sunk this time. <sighs> I'll get it. Hey, guys. Hi, Jamal. Man, I thought you were my dad at the door. Are you coming home? Yep. My mom called and said that he just got better all of a sudden. All right. They took an x-ray this morning, and the shadow on his heart just disappeared, just like it was never there in the first place. I think there's something wrong with the x-ray machine. What a relief. That's great, Jamal. Thanks, man. So, what about Ghost Rider? We haven't heard from him. It was real hard for him to take a message to Frank and Catherine the last time. We're not even sure if he made it back to 1928. Have you ever heard of Frank Flynn? No. Dr. Frank Flynn? Yeah, how do you know? Oh, I will never forget him. He saved Jamal's father's life a long, long time ago. What? When your father was born, he had a tiny hole in his heart. And by the time he was four years old, he was so sick. We were afraid we were going to lose him. And no doctor would operate on him because he was so little. Your grandfather and I worried ourselves, so we thought our son was going to die. But Dr. Frank Flynn was the head of surgery at Brooklyn Children's Hospital, and he'd been experimenting with these new surgery techniques. He convinced us to let him operate, and everything worked out well. <laughs> if it weren't for wow. Dr. Flynn, Reggie wouldn't be alive today. Why were you kids asking about him? Well, uh, we just were talking about Oh, OK, OK. Well, never mind. <laughs> I've got to go start preparing for Reggie's welcome home celebration. Why don't you kids stick around and help decorate the house? We'll be glad to help. Yeah, I'm going to bake the biggest cake you have ever seen. <laughs> Man, this is too weird. Yeah, but now we know what Ghostwriter meant when he said helping Frank would save the team. If Frank didn't become a doctor, your father would have died when he was four years old, and you wouldn't have been born. And we would have never met Ghostwriter, which means no team. Right. I don't get it, as usual. What about Ghost Rider? He saved the team, and now we have to rescue him. How do we start? Grandma Cece said Dr. Flynn worked at the Brooklyn Children's Hospital, right? Yeah. If we can find him, he might be able to tell us what happened to Ghost Rider and help us get him back. Good idea, Gab. Let's go. If we're lucky, we might be able to bring Ghost Rider and Frank back to the party with us. Dad, you look great. And I feel great. I'm telling you, it was like all of a sudden I got better. Like I was never sick at all. I hope you all didn't worry too much. Oh, I wasn't worried at all. I knew everything would work out fine. Oh, Grandma, <laughs> you knew you were worried too. Oh. You probably started writing my obituary, right? Oh. Mm -hmm. Obituary? Oh, yeah, that's a notice that people place in the newspaper when somebody dies. Uh, it tells about their life and the family members they left behind. Don't you think you should go upstairs and lie down? No, I'm telling you, I feel great. And I am hungry enough to eat that whole cake you're baking in there. Who told you I was baking that cake in there? My nose. Yep. <laughs> there is a caramel cake in that kitchen with my name. Now, you wait a minute. We can't cut that cake until Doris gets home. Now, you better wait a minute now. Hey, guys. My dad's back, and he's feeling great. Great. That's great, Jamal. Did you find Frank? No. What's the matter? He... Frank died May 1st of last year. He died? But... 
It's like we just wrote to him. Like he was just a kid like us. In 1928, he was a kid like us. Yeah. Man, I really wanted to meet him, to thank him. We all did. Ghost Rider! How are we going to find Ghost Rider now? Well, maybe Frank got married, and he told his family about Ghost Rider. If we get in touch with them, then maybe they'll help us find him. But how are we going to find his family now? We can read his obituary in the newspaper. Jamal's dad just told us family members are mentioned in the obituaries. Here it is. A copy of Dr. Frank Flynn's obituary from the New York Times. Thanks. What does it say? Dr. Frank Flynn, former head of surgery at Brooklyn Children's Hospital, died on Sunday at Memorial Hospital in Brooklyn. He was 76. Born in Cork, Ireland and raised in New York, Dr. Flynn dedicated his career to helping those who could not afford medical care and was one of the pioneers of heart surgery for children. That's how he saved Jamal's father. Does it say anything about his family? He is survived by his wife, Catherine Canellan Flynn, an author. Frank and Catherine got married? It looks that way. Cool. She would definitely know about Ghost Rider and what happened to him. Yeah, but how do we find her? The obituary says she's an author. Maybe the librarian can tell us how to find her. Excuse me. How can we get in touch with an author? By contacting the author's publisher. They'll send a letter on to the author. How do we find a publisher? They're listed in the front of the book. The publisher prints the author's books, and they're always listed in the front. Their address is on the next page, so you can write to them. Great. Do you have any books by Catherine Cannell and Flynn? Of course we do. She writes wonderful detective stories. As a matter of fact, she does most of her research right here in this library. You see the lady at the table over there? This is the lady I bumped into yesterday. Well, the lady you bumped into is Catherine Canellan Flynn. Are you serious? Yes, that's her. All right, Catherine! Please remember, this is a library. Sorry. Yes! <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, hi, do you remember me? I'm the girl who bumped into you yesterday. Oh. We're the Ghost Rider team. We helped you prove that Frank didn't steal the tea set. Don't you remember? I remember Ghost Rider, and, and I remember he had friends who sent us messages. Oh, but that couldn't be you. Yes, it was us. We sent you the message about the imposter. You? Yes, it was us. us. Oh. Well, ha cha cha, you <laughs> are Ghost Rider's friends. How did you find me? We read Frank's obituary in the newspaper and found out you two got married. We're sorry he died. Oh, felt like he was one of us. Yeah, and he was a great doctor. Frank and I had a wonderful life together. Because of you and Ghost Rider. We need to know what happened to Ghost Rider after he sent a message about Raynard Wilcox. Oh, Raynard Wilcox. Do you know that? That man's name still sends shivers down my spine. He almost got away. But luckily, Frank and I persuaded my father to take us to the warehouse where he was, and we watched the police check the place out. It's been out of my mind to let you two talk me into bringing you here. What do you mean? We solved the case. We deserve to see that dirty bum get caught. There's no guarantee he's in there. He never be caught. Oh, he's in there all right. And I can hardly wait to see the mug get put in handcuffs. Settle down, Frank. That must be Raynard Wilcox! You are a hero, my boy. You had no business butting in. 
I'll get you for this, kid. Ah, uh, save the gas. Yeah, shut your face, you big windbag. I'm Father. Ha cha cha. I guess I'm a bad influence on you too, huh, Doc? Let's go. Frank caught him. <laughs> he tackled him right before he got away. Sorry for all the bad things I did to you. I'm sorry for all the bad things you did to me, too. But I forgive you, I guess. Thanks, I guess. What's all the commotion? We're celebrating. Frank is not going to the home for wayward boys. He's staying right here with this family where he belongs. Ha cha cha! Frank, I owe you an apology. You're a good and honest boy. And if we ever have any problems, we'll solve them like a family. Thanks, Doc. Mrs. O'Boyle, you're not going away, are you? I'm not going anywhere. Someone's got to make sure that Frank stays on the straight and narrow and clean his coal dust footprints off the floor. That wasn't my now, footprint. Frank, don't start. He's telling the truth. <clears throat> the footprint was mine. Yours? <laughs> I'm afraid so. I went into the coal cellar with my shoes on. I'm the one who broke the rules. Well, I'll have to keep the both of the on straight and narrow now, won't I? That was the beginning of the best times in my life. I'm glad everything worked out. If Frank didn't grow up to become a doctor, our friend's father might not be alive today. I don't understand. Frank was the doctor who operated on his heart and saved him when he was a little boy. Oh, I see. And we probably wouldn't have ever met Ghost Rider. But what about Ghost Rider? Yes, where is he? Oh, I would love to see him again. We don't know where he is. He never came back after we sent you the last message. That's why we were trying to find you. To see if you knew what happened to him. I don't know. Frank and I went on writing to him, but he never answered. And so we assumed that, well, he'd gone back to 1993. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, this is 1993. <laughs> and here we are all really in the same room. Except oh. for Ghost Rider. I will never forget the time that Ghost Rider well, just popped out of Frank's diary. I was so frightened. I wish you had Frank's diary now. How come? Because if that's how Ghost Rider first got to 1928, maybe that's how he tried to come back and got stuck or something. Gabby could be right. Do you have Frank's diary at home? Oh, I haven't seen that diary since I was your age. But it's probably still in Frank's secret hiding place. Where's the hiding place? Well, it's behind a loose brick in the wall of the basement, the wall opposite the staircase, if I remember properly. Um, will you show us where it is? Oh, I don't live in that house anymore. Our friend Jamal lives there now. Please, you've got to help us save Ghost Rider. Well, there isn't anything I wouldn't do for Ghost Rider. Let's get out. <laughs> Are you sure it's in this wall? Yes, I'm sure. Just keep looking for a loose brick further down. I found it. Oh. It's the Brooklyn Eagle newspaper article about Raynard Wilcox's capture. Oh. Oh, Frank and I were so proud. We must have bought a hundred copies of this paper. All oh, the words are back. Because everything worked out the way it should. Almost everything. Is that the diary? Yes. That's Frank's diary. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's open it. I'm scared. If this doesn't help us find Ghost Rider, he's gone forever. Well, the sooner we look inside, the sooner we're going to know, kiddo. Is that him? Look at 
the greatest team of all time. Are you okay? I'm a tough old girl, remember? <laughs> You should have this. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Claudia. Thank you. Come on, Daddy. Daddy, come on, bring it over. Let's see what we thought before I show it to you, okay? Oh, yes. Yeah. Exercise your head. Read. Ghost Art is brought to you in part by Nike. Additional bucks that keep our team supreme come from public television viewers like you and me. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting. The John Dean Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. The Pew Charitable Trust. And the Youth Department of Education. But you can't say it all on breath. I bet you can. Ghost Rider was originally produced for the Public Broadcasting Service. Read more about Ghost Rider and the Ghost Rider team in these Bantam books. To purchase Bantam books, video cassettes, or a teacher's guide for programs in this series, contact GPN, P.O. Box 80669, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68501, or call one 800 228 4630.